And so uh, let's talk about rating competition. So share yes. with us, how does Amazon rate competition? Yeah. So Amazon has, they when I worked there, they had three bands, A band, B band, and C band. And so that was for the volume, that was for items and in terms of volume. And then in competition, they had a group that they called image competitors. And we'd say, all right, these are our, our, our image competitors. And it was Target, Walmart, Home Depot, Best Buy. And then in Canada, it was like Canadian Tire, Loblaw, London Drugs, you know, uh, in the US, CBS, Walgreens, as you can imagine. But there's certain competitors that Amazon has deemed as image competitors. And in that idea is that a consumer would go, would trust um, the product and information from that competitor as much as they would from Amazon. So what Amazon would do is these image competitors, they would want to make sure that they are meeting their price on every single offer available. And one place that this popped up, um, and it was, and it really upset the, the brand owners, were was in the printing world, was in the home printing space. So you have Canon, you have uh, Brother, you have HP, um, who have these printers, right, these home printers. And they had set up relationships with brick and mortar companies. So Best Buy would run a promo on HP during week one, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, Staples would run one on, you know, Brother, and then, you know, a third person would run, you know, on, um, on the third item. And then the next week, everybody would reshuffle. So Best Buy would get the Brother, you know, Staples would get the, you know, the other one, and then everybody would shuffle. So nobody in brick and mortar would ever compete in the same week on the same item with promotional pricing. <clears throat> the problem is Amazon had all those items and Amazon considered each one of them a competitor. So every week Amazon was, you know, matching price, matching price. And so HP and all of them were irate because this is not how they had set up the industry. You know, they had done like all these back end couponings with Best Buy and all these places so that they made sure that the money flowed evenly. And Amazon just kept, you know, and Amazon says, hey, we're just matching the price that's in the market. So that was a huge kind of, you know, problem. And Amazon, you know, because Amazon said, these are our competitors. So as a small seller, as a, you know, or a vendor, you know, you do want to think about where is my product selling, you know? And if you get into certain, um, certain stores like um, Plum or there's some like, you know, small kind of like natural retailers that to you and me may not seem like the biggest competitors, but Amazon says, you know what? 80% of their selection are, you know, is 80% are eighty of our top sellers. So we want to make sure that we're matching. So that is one thing to keep an eye, keep an eye on. Um, image competitors on an A band item. So an item that has high volume, that's being scraped multiple times an hour, um, 10, 12, 15 times an hour. They're going out to other places and scraping, 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 looking for pricing. Um, I had to because we didn't have uh, that capability in Canada at the time, for six months, every day, I had to track the diaper prices across 50 diapers, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, didn't matter. Um, and Canada does this thing where uh, once a month, they give families um, a certain governmental credit for the number of kids you have, we called it the baby bonus. And so all the retailers try to promote to that baby bonus to get the parent in. So diapers and milk and all those things really get pushed down during that week, so that you get that baby bonus dollars into the retailer. So I was having to track all that because we didn't have it automated at the time. Um, and we would adjust as soon as we saw papers, you know, pull-ups going down by, you know, 30%, boom, within minutes, I was making sure that we were matching that. And now it's all automated. So just something to keep in mind with Amazon. And then the B items get like at least multiple times a week. And then the C items, maybe once a week, maybe once a month, you know, those are much slower moving items. They're just not as uh, important to Amazon. So and and what makes something an A item or versus B item or C item? Um, purely volume of sales. Um, so basically, the highest volume items, the items that are probably in the top five, ten percent uh, of the catalog in terms of sales over the trailing thirty days uh, and probably trailing uh, ninety days. So those two windows, um, you know, if it, and most of the time, you know, if it's it was already there, right? Like the mega pack for the size four diapers. That's the most common size for kids. It's the largest pack. You know, it's going to be the top seller. But in essence, it's kind of that top five to ten percent of the catalog that, in terms of revenue, in terms of top line revenue, um, that they're monitoring and trying to uh, make sure that they're matching on. 
And of course, an item that's a C item can become a B or an A, and the A yes. can become B or C, right? So totally. it's be specific criteria to say, okay, this is now in the e A category or B category, C category. So yeah, so Amazon's a lot of driven by Amazon system. So, um, you know, I wish I had more perspective, but it definitely, anytime I saw it, it's always aligned to revenue. You know, the C category was basically like, you know, that other kind of like 50% of the catalog, because, you know, there's a long tail. Right. I mean, there's this infinite yeah. table. Um, and so that is, you know, that's kind of and also this is only on items that Amazon controls pricing.